Vodafone cares about you and your health. HealthFest has gone from strength to strength. It gives hope to many Ghanaians across the nation with its free medical assessment and care. The Medical Call Center 255 continues to empower Ghanaians with our unique phone-in medical consultancy. But it all started here on your TV screen with the award-winning program, Healthline. This week on Vodafone Healthline, our doctors talk about pregnancy. In the field, we meet Jafaru, who has an unusual condition affecting his ability to eat. to start living a healthy, happier life, join the discussion this week on Healthline. My name is Ruth. Meet your doctors. Hi, I'm Lorraine. Hello, I'm Papani. And I'm Bright. You're welcome to the show. It's time for a question from my health care. My name is Stella. I want to know how many months or years does it take for you to exercise after C-session? Beyond six weeks, you can start gradually by doing a bit of walking. You can do a few sit-ups, the gentle ones. Very, very gentle uh, sit-ups. And then gradually, once you feel you can tolerate the exercise a bit, you go into more brisk walks, an occasional jog. If you start feeling any kind of pain, you need to stop. I'm going to tell you this honestly. Make sure you start doing this only when you don't have pain. The danger of exerting yourself when your body is not ready cannot be overemphasized. Now, someone might take six weeks to heal. Somebody might feel the pain after a cesarean for as long as three months. So listening to your body and listening to how well you feel your body has recuperated from a very invasive surgical procedure is important. Now the danger is you could end up causing a herniation because the muscles might not be properly strengthened and then as you're exerting yourself, sometimes some end up doing sit-ups and very strenuous exercises. You could end up getting a hernia or a protrusion of your bowel into the portions of the muscle. So please, let's be very careful. Listening to your body is essential. Just take it easy. Gradually, you will lose the baby fat, but don't push yourself too hard. We have an SMS from Karima. Karima lives at Oyibi. And she says, I'm a volleyball player on a team, and I'm now three months pregnant. How long can I play for until it's unsafe for me and the baby? Karima, it actually depends on you, all right? So if you've ever had a pregnancy or something before, you've had complications with a previous pregnancy, I would advise that stop playing the volleyball. The volleyball will still be there after you've given birth. And Karima, now, when you are three months, Usually, your womb is still well below in the pelvis. Most people won't even show. So it looks like it's fine. You could probably just go on doing that. But once the belly starts coming out and it begins to show, that's in your second and third trimester, there's always that danger that if you're involved in an exercise with a lot of people, somebody can easily bump into you. And it can cause what we call an abrupt show, meaning that your placenta can kind of share off from the uterine bed, and that is very dangerous. So I know you want to play volleyball, but please, take your time. I read equips you with important tips for your medical emergencies. Hey, Charlie Spy. Hi. Suskit. Hi. Are they Hi. What's your name? Hey. Hey, what is this? No, I'm not a doctor, but with first aid, I can help. First aid for epilepsy. Remove harmful objects from nearby to protect the person from injury. Cushion the head. Look for an epilepsy identity card or identity jewelry. And aid breathing by gently placing them in the recovery position once the seizure has finished. 
Stay with the person until recovery is complete and remember to be calmly reassuring. So you see, it's not really rocket science now, is it? Vodafone, power to you. Hi, and welcome again to another Street Doctor segment. You know, x-rays are one of the most common tests you find in a hospital. But what exactly are x-rays? Are they painful? Are they dangerous? You know what? Let's just go find out. Healthline would like to thank Impact Medical and Diagnostics in Asylum Down for the use of their facilities. Okay, you're going to have a PA chest x-ray. So you'd have to, your chest would be, you have to face this. So you have to turn around and face okay. in the back. Okay, so you're going down a bit. So when you say PA X-ray, what do you mean? It's the posterior anterior of the chest. From the back to the front? Yes. Okay. All right. So your chest will get closer to the backy, and then you fold up the elbows, and then this way it touches. I would ask you, I'm positioning you now, I would ask you to take in a deep breath, hold it, so I ask you to breathe out. Okay, so let's try one more time. So taking a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, so I'm going to set my exposures and then I'll take the x-ray. Okay. All right, so you make sure you don't move, you stay in that position. All right, Nick, I would ask you to breathe in, breathe out. Okay, breathe in again, hold it, breathe out. Okay, we are done. Okay, Papa Nye, this is this is the x-ray of your chest. Um, your lungs are well inflated. Um, your heart size looks normal, and so this is a normal radiograph of your chest, so your chest looks fine. Well, that's nice to know. So you see, it was painless, harmless, and it took just a few minutes. I got my x-ray done, and my lungs are fine, my chest is fine. If you have to do an x-ray, please don't be scared, just go, have them do it, and let's just see what the problem might be. Till next time, take care. It's never too early to start thinking about your child's health. Join us on Kids Corner today. We're discussing hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is indeed a big word, but what it means is water in the brain. Now this is a model of the brain. And what the brain has, it's got fluid that surrounds the brain and travels down the spinal cord. It acts as a shock absorber, protecting the brain from injury. So this same fluid that is around the brain is also found inside the brain, deep inside the brain. So if you can see these blue areas, this is where the fluid is, and it's called CSF. Now naturally, CSF is found in, should I say, a normal quantity, a normal volume. But certain things occur that result in accumulation of this fluid. Now if you realize, if there's accumulation of this fluid, it begins to compress on the normal brain tissue, and again, it begins to compress or push out on the skull. So you usually see these children and they have big heads. In some places, they call them water brain. Okay. Now, hydrocephalus is highly treatable, and the treatment modality depends on what is causing it. It could have been caused by an obstruction. So in this case, if you're able to relieve the obstruction, then the CSF will be able to flow freely and then drain. But then, if it's due to an excessive accumulation, with that, you need to find a bypass to kind of, you know, drain off the excessive CSF that's being formed. So in that case, we have a surgical procedure, and this is done by a neurosurgeon. These are brain surgeons. So they connect a little tube from the brain, they tunnel it down into um, the lining of the, the abdomen. We call it the peritoneum. So it's called the VP shunt. And this is a surgical procedure that is done in this country. The reason I want to encourage parents or any guardians who have children with, you notice that no, the head is slightly bigger. The diagnostic tests, which are highly available, like a CT scan, would show that this is what is happening. Intervention is sought early so that you can improve the outcome of your child's life and make sure that they grow up to be healthy children. Let's uncover the truth on Myth Busters. We'll take a question from the audience. Hello, doctors. My name is Tina. 
I have heard that using waste trainers can cause infertility. How true is this? Thank you, Tina. I'm not surprised you're asking this question because suddenly there's become a craze with waste training. Do you guys know what waste training is? Because you have slightly have puzzled... Have you heard of corsets before? Oh, yeah. Corsets, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So with these corsets, they're able to pull the string and then this gives the body an hourglass shape. But then the question is, how healthy is it? Now imagine that someone is squeezing you so tight that you can't breathe. And the danger is that most women stay in these corsets for an essential part of the day because if you are going to work in it, it means you're going to stay in it for at least eight hours. And that is where it becomes dangerous. You know, the question whether as to whether or not it affects fertility, really, it shouldn't stop you from being able to achieve pregnancy. But it depends also on the kind of corset you're using. Some corsets will probably just take two inches off your waist, others four inches. The extreme ones can take about six inches off your waist. So you can imagine, you're walking like a zombie, you can't breathe because you know it's restricting you, the movement of your belly and you know you kind of use your stomach muscles when you're breathing, you know. So while it may not stop you from being able to become pregnant, it just restricts you so much. I would like to advise that for those of you who want to keep the shape, there's always exercise. Now the truth is not everybody was born to have the hourglass shape. So don't try and force it on yourself because then you end up looking a little bit irregular. <laughs> so then you can actually use these corsets or what do you guys call them again? Waist trainers. Yeah, waist trainers. So you can use these waist trainers to just augment the shape and the beauty that you already have. The following segment contains material of an adult nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's talk about sex. Linda from Tema sends us an SMS, and this is her question. I have heard a lot about the G-spot. What exactly is it, and how can I find it? It's going to help a lot of guys. I'm sure they're paying rapt attention right now. Now, the G-spot is basically that place within the vagina which, when stimulated, results in an intense sexual arousal. And if done well and for a long period, a protracted period of time, can actually result in orgasms, in some cases, multiple orgasms. I'll try my best to show you how you can locate it. I'll just use this model right here. So, a little anatomy. What we have in front here is the bladder. And behind it is from this point here is the vagina, we get to the cervix, and we have the uterus. Now our point of concentration is the vagina, which starts right from here all the way to this place. Now the G-spot is, is said to be found about five to eight centimeters from the opening of the vagina, which is here. So we travel about five centimeters or eight centimeters, which is somewhere around, around this area, and it's found on the anterior side. That means it's found towards the front. So five centimeters right from here all the way here, the G-spot should be located around this area, okay? So that's the best I can say. Otherwise, you'd probably have to try Google Maps. Right. It could help. <laughs> it could. Right. No, I've heard other ones. I could be wrong. But I was under the impression, I mean, if the average finger length is about, what, six, seven? And you're telling me it's eight cm? It's it five to eight. Okay, so right. then if it's all the way 8 cm, you must have some super long fingers or whatever it is to get to the G spot. The idea is really not about the finger, it's actually about the penis reaching that place. And the average length of the penis is about 8 centimeters. So at least if you're not that endowed and you have 5 centimeters, you could actually get there. But then getting to the G spot is usually not uh, accomplished using the missionary position. You actually have to try other positions that give you direct access to the G-spot. So I think these are some things that you'd have to probably see a professional, a sex therapist, then they could show you those positions. It looks like I have to revise my notes then, Bright. <laughs> but bear in mind, you see, I, I like what Bright said. It's elusive and mysterious. What that means, guys, is that... It's like the Bermuda Triangle. You don't always <laughs> find it, and you may live your entire life and never find it. And don't ask your wife, where did she leave it? She said she can't find, she can't find it, okay. Me pa chama din di wini Friday champon. Emreka ke che me fa ye fun, 
But now my first time, it's not me knowing how to go about it. But I found two five five me from on our mobile phone. I'm meeting me who they are saying me didn't they are saying me yeah any any say me yeah na. Am I name my wife? My wife? My wife? Some dream one. Now me the word I found two five five health line for us. For now, Mariama shields her son from all the cold stares and the rude reactions in the community. But how much longer can she protect Jafaru with his unusual condition? Jafaru Mawan is a two-year-old boy presenting with a vascular malformation, which was present at birth, but keeps growing very fast. When Mariama carried Jafaru, I am a Ah, but you need to know how to find the data. To unbuy, me and my sister, my mother also. We are not able to find the data. We did this, we are not able to change the data. We are not using the data. We are not able to find 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 the data. Nadiens My friend is Joseph Japasu. He says he computers and laptops. Uh, one day we were shop and Maria Mani ni ba and I mean who ni ba no. We must say why are they? See, because sometimes he just want to have money to scare Kakra. So on from Fuka, no on from in the hospital. And uh, they sometimes uh, they are more limpo edgy. And see, yeah, we must be nice to scare Kakra. No man no. So on from to be any. Oh, boy, me pa. On se min nibi, obe manu kakra se min fanya lori fe, obe manu kakra se min fan to nyama na min to. Ti biscuit eni toffee eni pio water fe si a pio water nasa. Ti onu ni mi to. Kakrebi, o manu kakra na oko se min fan to adiema kolan. Joseph, eni Jafaro, et se ni ba. Oh, I'm fine, Pa. I'm going to meet you. I could be here and now. I'll be a problem. I'm going to 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 be a problem. Because I'm going to be a problem. 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 Maria Mabano, ni yari ano. Amama shia ni amama bibi. Awo abrabo mu se like ubi hiyo bwa wase utumi bwa ano. Ubi mu china wase utumi bwa ano. Mi ni ubi aso se mi ni madi ukwa na mbeye. Anu miya kesi yesa, o nu minsio, minsio mina engineer na anu, o didi so, edwiana na egufo, anso ehame, ehame pa, o bi chomo yefi ukura atesa akwalansi, o mu free school ba e, o mbe shwa akwalansi sa, no mu sreno, tembi wana meka sa o mu se, mu o mu njai sa no o mu yeme ba no, o mu njai sa no o mu yeme ba ne mimpe. I am here, Pa. To move, me banusa. We be almost ready, no Pa. It me me pierre kwa kwa tadi se obesua dimechi na mi dinaba 
na na hose on kitama mint min fan kwa bonti mi dinu kwa bonti kura ombe srenu sa inte min fan kwa bonti o tina fies me kwa ba na yeni tinas ni min ye min after hearing jafaru's story Vodafone made sure Jafaru received the life-changing surgery he required. Vodafone Healthline would like to thank the staff at Rich Hospital for all they have done for Jafaru and his family. Hopefully this should be less than an hour uh, if everything goes according to plan. Usually anything dealing with the blood vessels is a difficult procedure, but we're going to do everything possible for not to have those type of complications. That is the bleeding when we're doing that type of surgery. Bleeding is the most we have to be worried about, but we've taken every preventive measure not to fall into that type of complication. Yes, the surgery was successful. We managed to debug the hemangioma as we suspected. It uh, demonstrated to be a very highly bleeding uh, lesion. But we managed, through the use of a laser cautery and a datemi, we managed to excise the whole lesion and later did a lip repair. He's still young. I'm hopeful the lip should gain a competence back as soon as possible. Please welcome Jafaru, his mother Mariama, and Joseph into the studio. Fachomi Mamuni na Akwaba. Auntie Mariama, as you say. Sorry, Kakra Mami. Aha. Na CCA Jafaru are your operation no. O she before and after. Difference is been a womb. To me from pure kura. Sa wo hu. E si ade o ko be bia. Eh eh o chin area area eh. E si ade o area bug. Oh sane eh sane eh. Mariama CCA Jafaru in be 20 years and na in be 15 years. E dey need as one na wo ma no. CCA ye to me your operation na. No one Doctor Jafari, ni aswa so wone ni mno ni na kaka ankra ni na betu chini fine. Inti yasha asi di ebe make sure se bibia be we pepe pepe. Why? E ya butre yo. This brings us to the close of this week's episode. It has been our pleasure hosting you. Until next week. Remember to eat your fruits and vegetables to avoid the doctor. Bye-bye. Vodafone will continue to support this program. If you have been moved by the stories or issues you've seen on Healthline, you can donate one Ghana CD by texting GIVE to 133. Or you can donate by sending your contribution via Vodafone Cash to 835-000. Next week on Vodafone Healthline, our doctors talk about truth serum. In the field, we catch up with Comfort a year after her encounter with Vodafone.
Vodafone. Power to you.